So what are your questions now to our panel? It's not much of a question, but an observation when I listened to Jonas and I was going through a box with old pictures that my grandmother left and some of the pictures had nice writings on the back who they who was on the pictures and some others didn't and I could figure out who they were and some was I mean they're lost. I have no idea who's on the pictures and I guess this metadata thing is about the same thing. We want people to get the names of their relatives and whatever they take pictures of on the back of the digital pictures. Um, another question to you, Jonas, is um, why, what is the reason that you haven't defined commercial use? Political. <laughs> um, th there's no good answer to why we haven't defined it. it it's, a, uh, it's a political judgment, it's a, something that has been going back and forth, whether we should define it more, more carefully or whether we shouldn't define it more carefully. Um, even within the organization and between our, you know, our, we have about 200 lawyers around the world who are part of our network, um, and I would say it's, it's maybe a split even 50-50 almost across them. Um, I definitely see the benefit of, of wanting to define it more in detail because I think that would be beneficial both for, for those who actually use the CC licenses, but also for, for those sort of fall to the side, because it's clearer then that you actually fall to the side of the license. Um, we might get there eventually, but it is an, an ongoing discussion, so. I mean, just to comment, the, the, the lack of that is actually preventing anyone in the engaged in professional photography from using CC. Hmm. Right, so, so there is a, a sort of decision tree. Uh, I'd be happy to share it with you. It says, the closest we get to a consensus on what is actually commercial is a decision tree with a number of questions where you ask, answer, you know, are you a non-profit, are you not a non-profit, if you're a non-profit, are you then doing this, are you doing that? Uh, and in the end, you sort of determine from this decision tree whether it's commercial, non-commercial, or somewhere in between. But obviously, a lot of the cases will be in between. So. Sticking with the commercial issue, uh, just, just out of curiosity, I noted that um, the commercial grant was a prohibition, but there was no affirmative grant of commercial rights. Can you explain a little bit of the thought behind why you approached it that way? In other words, I can't use a CC license to explicitly grant commercial rights, and a commercial entity is always left wondering whether or not they actually have them. Okay, very simple. Uh, we always assume that everyone should be able to use things commercially, period. Um, th that's the sort of baseline. And if you actively want to discourage commercial use, then you can say that it's uh, prohibited. Uh, but the default setting for us is, is that commercial use is absolutely okay. I mean, that's part of the, the openness that we advocate. It can be non-commercial or commercial, but you know, we, we don't make restrictions on that. Yeah, question to Phil. You you said correctly that it all <clears throat> basically depends on the willingness of the receiving end. Do you see the option that at some point the stakeholders will come together and may agree on a standard, or do you think that that is really not uh, likely such self-regulation, so that in the end we will get something like an international regulation, which basically forces the players to recognize those standards? Uh, I can't see it working. People are going to go around it. Um, you have to have a reason to want to buy into the system. The reason why this industry wants to express its rights is, is obvious, and you have mortgages to pay, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but the end user, if they can take a screen grab and copy your image, that's what they're going to do. Um, and the web works in such a way that there ain't any way around it. Um, I, somebody earlier on was talking about, oh yes, we checked and you can't right click and save something. Okay, just disable JavaScript and it works. Or have a look at the DOM tree. And it, I mean, it, it's, you know, for someone who knows a little bit about it, downloading an image that in theory you can't download, uh, sorry, you can. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it really, you have to have somebody at the end who has a motivation for doing it. And the only motivation really could be you won't get it unless you do. In which case your content has to be good enough people want to pay for. And then you get into well, how do you fund the arts, how do you fund niche stuff and so on. And uh, I, I'm not, it, it isn't an easy solution. I don't think there is one. And you, you have to find a way to make money out of stuff. Um, the Hollywood music industry way of doing things is very restrictive. Um, They've got to find a better model, I think. You know, I mean, they're making huge amounts of money on live gigs. 
Cinema is still making money. You know, getting people in places is making money. You aren't going to get people going along listening to you know, people standing on soapboxes telling you the news. I mean, you know, that's not going to happen. We can't have town criers charging for their services. It isn't easy. I don't, I don't pretend there is one. But you need to have people wanting to do it. Because if you... I mean, sta I've, I wrote a standard that replaced one that wasn't being used. And I replaced one that wasn't being used by another one that isn't being used. Standards... That's only part of the story. And you can say, this is the W3C standard, you must use it. Nah, don't have to. Robots.txt wasn't developed as an open standard. RSS wasn't developed as an open standard, everyone uses them. So, you know, the, the, the fact that it is a standard doesn't mean to say that it automatically be used, neither does the reverse uh, apply. I just have one comment on that. I think that there's maybe a comment that's worth making here, and that some of these standards work extremely well in business-to-business -business contexts. But I agree with you. I think it's very hard to see. Well, even even within relatively open supply chains, businesses on the whole you know, have reasons for complying with the law, for example. Uh, whereas uh, the same standard may well fail spectacularly in a business-to-consumer context. My question is primarily to the gentleman from Creative Commons, but my uh, uh, but I'm interested more broadly in what the panel thinks as well. Um, you know, as news organizations, of course, we, pr we produce news information generally in the form of articles, videos, text, and that is pretty clearly copyrightable work in most in most copyright regimes. But increasingly, uh, we find ourselves in the business of distributing data as well, and. It's unclear to me that Creative Commons is the right solution for that, and if there are better approaches to asserting rights over the data that we release, um, in addition to the, the journalistic products that we, we produce. So there is a, a Creative Commons license called the CC0, uh, which essentially waives as many rights as possible in three different layers. Um, and that's the one we, we would obviously recommend for data, because it's the most open one. It's the one that encourages the most reuse of the data. Um, the Open Knowledge Foundation has a different license, uh, which they encourage. But regardless of which, what we have seen in, in the research that we have done and that others have done is the more open you are when you're releasing data, the more reuse you will get from it and more benefit will fall onto you as the, the original supplier of it. Any final notes from the panel that we haven't covered, maybe? <coughs>